So dental caries, or what we call tooth decay, dental caries is a disease. So there is nothing called dental caries, like some usually say. So once we say dental caries, it is one disease. There is something very important we need to talk about. The cause are the factor determinants of dental caries. Factor determinants of dental caries. Once, when we are talking about dent, the factors responsible for dental caries, we shall say they are dental caries multifactor. We shall say that dental caries is multifactor. What do we mean? It is not caused by one, or it is it cannot happen when we have only one cause. What do we mean by that? For some of you, the common example that I was giving on the on the community video when I was talking about caries for the community, I I used the example of some of us. Who are using who cook using cooking stones? Once you cook using cooking stones, you shall find that you have one stone, the second stone, the third stone. You need to put your saucepan in the middle part to be held. You can put the saucepan or a pot in the middle part to be held by all the three of them. Once one cooking stone breaks, it means the, the, the pot or the saucepan will also move off and the cooking will not take place. Therefore, we shall also say that dental caries is my factor. We have all the causes participating for us to have what? Dental caries. What are these factors? Factor number one. Factor number one is what you call bacteria. Factor number two, or oh, another cooking stone here, is what we call is what we call food. We can call it food here. We can talk of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates or refined sugars. Number three. Number three. We shall talk of a host. A host, this is a tooth surface. A tooth surface. And lastly, number four is time. Lastly, number four is time. Bacteria. What is this bacteria? We shall say that in a simple way that our mouth, our bodies are made up of they have bacteria in them. We have bacteria in the oral cavity, we have bacteria in the GIT, we have bacteria in all parts of the body. And this bacteria is not any other bacteria but normal flora. Usually people will say that the germ may or uh, something came from the tooth, it came from one tooth to the other. But here we are talking about normal flora. Normal flora is what we are talking about. So normal flora is this bacteria. Normal flora is this bacteria. Normal flora is bacteria. Bacteria, when is given what to eat, or carbohydrates or food, it is going to 
cause what you call fermentation. It's going to cause fermentation. Fermentation after causing fermentation, after fermentation of food, we shall cause, we shall come in with acids. After having acids, we shall have the acids are the ones which are going to reach on the tooth surface and burn it. But as it burns it, we shall have an, uh, in, um, uh, the inorganic part having demineralization and the organic part also being destroyed or the destruction and the end result is cavities. So bacteria is normal flora. And the bacteria here, which we are talking about, is streptococcus mutant, is the highest, is the main one. Streptococcus mutant is the main one that is used that is usually responsible for the fermentation of food to produce the acids, the acids that burn the tooth or cause demineralization of the tooth or destruction of the organic part, causing what? Cavities or holes. So here, when you're talking about the role of bacteria, you need to mention that this is normal flora or normal bacteria. So normal bacteria is the one that is responsible for that. And we shall have bacteria which can be, another thing to talk about bacteria, this bacteria is adapted to even produce more acids, even in the acidic environment. And we shall call that one acidic bacteria. Acidic bacteria, the bacteria can produce more acids or can continue doing fermentation of food to produce acids, causing what? Demineralization of the tooth and causing cavities, even in the acidic environment. And that one is what we call acidic what? Bacteria. So we shall remember telling us that this is normal flora or bacteria which is responsible for causing fermentation of carbohydrates or sugars, causing uh, creating acids, acids which are going to cause the realization of the tooth, causing what? Cavities, as a simple as that. Number two is food. When you talk about the food responsible for tooth decay, we are going to talk about usually carbohydrates, because it is these carbohydrates that can be fermented. Once you talk about proteins, no. Proteins, no. Vitamins, no. But usually here we are emphasizing the food that is responsible for causing tooth decay. We are, cause, we are saying these are what? Carbohydrates. Secondary, refined sugars. The word refined is very important. Carbohydrates, we know that bread, potato, what, and thus, yam, depending, wheat, and others. We have a lot of carbohydrates in them. These ones can be fermented to produce these what? Acids. Meaning the food which is not fermented is not responsible for what? For this. So that's why we are emphasizing carbohydrates and what? And refined sugars. We also emphasize the word refined because the when you say sugars, sugars may, all sugars are not bad. The bad sugars are the sugars which are made. What do we mean? We have sugars, good sugars, good sugars, good sugars, for example, in sugarcane. In sugarcane, sugarcane has good sugars. In yellow banana, in yellow bananas, we have good sugars. In fruits, we have good sugars. So it means that we can have 
sugars which are good for the body and which are not responsible for what? For dental caries. But the sugars we are talking about are the refined sugars. The refined sugars are the sugars which are what of course from what? The carbohydrates and these ones, they quickly, the refined sugars. For example, in sodas, for example, in biscuits, in sweets, what else? In chocolate, in chocolate, all of these ones, all of these we call them, so in our word we call them cardiogenic. Cardiogenic foods. So the word cardiogenic, uh, it means foods which can easily be what fermented to cause to, to come out with what with the acids. So, however much we are saying carbohydrates and sugars, refined sugars are bad because they can be fermented to cause acids. But for refined sugars, they are more responsible. They are more times responsible because they are easily fermented to cause acids, the acids which burn what? Which burn your, your tooth, the inorganic part and the structure of organic part to create what? Cavities. Thank you so much. What else? We are going to talk about the third point. The third point is a host. A host is a tooth surface. <coughs> a host is a tooth surface. A tooth surface, I already talked about it under uh, classification. A, a, a tooth surface, they are the parts of a tooth which can easily retain food. The food may not easily be retained on a smooth surface. That is why the dental caries, we are going to find them more on the teeth, the posterior teeth, which have uh, the pits and fissures. Because these pits, when you eat the chocolate, when you eat the sweet, and you grind it, you shall find some food deposits, some sweet, some biscuit, some cardiogenic food retained in here. We have also grooves. In the grooves, we talked about developmental grooves. Can find it here in this in this between the tooth and the other. If this is our tooth and also this is our tooth, in the in these areas here, we can have food retained around here. So in the pits and fissures, food can be retained. In the proximal surfaces, food can be retained. In these surfaces, this is this is what you call what. A tooth surface. They can, there's no way how food can be fermented when it is not what? On a tooth surface. Well, the food which you swallow cannot be fermented by, by these acids, by, so it, by this bacteria. So we need also a tooth surface conducive for retaining food for some time to cause what? To cause what? Fermentation and what? Acids. That is very important. Then now we also have another important part. We so saw we shall conclude by we shall say that anterior teeth are less susceptible to tooth decay than posterior teeth. Why? Even when you're talking, you can rinse so and do some kind of clearance using your tongue. You are reducing on the food retention. But the other ones, are all the posterior teeth, for them you may not do it so easily. Then secondly, the posterior teeth, they have fish, pits and fishers. But the anterior teeth, they do not have. So, you're most likely to have food, to have dental caries on the posterior teeth than what? Anterior teeth. Then, the last Point here, we have time. Time is very important because everything here may not change. 
Everything here may not change, but time can change. You may not remove bacteria from the body because this is normal bacteria. You may not remove food from, you cannot stop food because we eat food every day, especially carbohydrates, our body, uh, their energy giving what? Foods or energy building, uh, they give us energy. The host, the tooth surface, you are not going to extract all the teeth from your mouth. But we are having time. Time is very important. When all of these things are given time, when the bacteria is given enough time, when the bacteria is given enough time, when the bacteria is given enough time, it's, it's when it's going to ferment food, the carbohydrates, and produce acids. If it has no enough time, it is not going to do to make this process. Meaning, the moment somebody takes in, even if it is a biscuit, and brushes very quickly, it can do what? It cannot take place. The same point, that's why you are saying, if in case you want to take this carnogenic food, rinse quickly or brush quickly, you are limiting what? Time. So, but the time we are talking about is the time given to the bacteria to ferment these uh, carbohydrates produce acids. So, the more time it is given without brushing, the more time it ferments and produces acids, the acid which do harm of creating what? Cavities. The more time, the danger. We are talking about also term, time in, in terms of, we say the more time, the more dangerous. Also, you say it also the time of sleeping. Sleeping, we said when you sleep, when you sleep, the body relaxes. The moment the body relaxes, the physiology of the body or the body systems, they, they reduce on the function because the body is resting. Whilst if that one is done, the saliva production also reduces. Remember, what produces saliva? We say in saliva is sight. When you sight, when you think about food, once food reaches the mouth, or even, uh, so once all those things, there is no sight, there is no food, there is no thing about food, and therefore there is no saliva production. It is there, but so limited. Remember, we said saliva is very important. So saliva is important to dilute these acids. So the formation of food can be, formation of fermentation can take place, but once acids are formed and we have saliva, saliva can dilute it. So, the moment you sleep, most of, especially most of us who sleep at night, or even if you sleep during the day, the moment you sleep, you are going to have low saliva production. Low saliva production. Low saliva production is going to lead to is going to lead to a, a problem because the acids here are not what are not buffered or they are not uh, <clears throat> are, uh, the acids here are not reduced in function. But once we have a lot of saliva, they are going to dilute this acid and we shall not have what? Cavities. So when once you sleep without brushing, you shall have the acids being formed and we have nothing to dilute it and shall have more what? Cavities. So we talk about time in terms of length of time food stays in the mouth and so time at night when you are sleeping. We say that when you're sleeping, there is no saliva uh, in the mouth that use the acids and you shall have more cavities. Think about it when you sleep during the day. When you sleep during the day, uh, within one hour, the mouth is smelling if you didn't brush. It means the moment you give it time, you shall have more fermentation of what? Of food. Causing acids, the acids which cause what? Cavities. These are the main four cooking stones or the main four factor determinants of dental caries. However, we can add others or some other weak ones which may be associated with what? With it. We can add maybe one or two. The one we can add is 
just as simple as xerostomia. Systemic factors, xerostomia. Xerostomia is uh, low saliva production. Low saliva production, I've talked about the role of saliva. In, we can have people with diseases which lead to low saliva production. If you have a disease, if you have medication you're taking that lead to low saliva production, you're more likely to have what? Dental caries because of the role of saliva we, have talk, we, are, we are going to talk about. Maybe another one which may also be a weak one is poor oral hygiene. Poor oral heart hygiene. Those are six, but the major ones are those. Then, as we are, we are concluding, as we are concluding our lecture, we need to emphasize the role of saliva. What is the role of saliva? Role of saliva in the caries. Usually, it is a common question. What is the role of saliva in the caries? <clears throat> saliva is very important. But what does it do? Saliva is important because of its number one is what you call clearance. Clearance or cleansing effect. Cleansing effect. The moment you have saliva and maybe you have not rinsed your mouth but you have saliva somehow it dries away the saliva, well, uh, the, rather the food particles in the mouth. So by doing that, we are calling it what a cleansing effect because of its low what uh, viscosity, cleansing effect, or oh, reducing some of the food particles. You swallowing them, you swallowing them. You rinse, you swallow. That is, you are reducing them. It means. The amount, remember where it is going, has no effect. But when my, the moment it remains in the oral cavity, it is going to cause what? Uh, give, it's going to give time to bacteria to ferment it. And the fermentation will lead to acids, acids, cavities. Number two is the buffer. The buffering action. Remember I talked about buffering action. Because we said saliva is alkaline in nature. When alkaline meets acid, it dilutes. That one is our olive chemistry. You know that. If you don't want to use the word dilute, you can say neutralize. So it neutralizes that. The moment the acids we have been talking about this one from the fermentation are formed, the saliva does what we call buffering or we can call it what? Neutral. Neutralization. When it neutralizes it, it becomes harmless. So, when the moment you have more saliva in the mouth, the more advantage you have because the acids, however much it is formed, is going to be what? Harmless. Another one, we talked about the function of saliva being in what you call remineralization. Remineralization and mineralization. We talked about the function of saliva. The components of saliva say saliva is made up of organic and inorganic. But among the inorganic, we have the, uh, the minerals, maybe fluoride, for example, fluoride. So as the as we have remineralization, we shall always have remineralization. The acids are formed, but we also have saliva, which is adding itself on the tooth. So we shall have both mineralization and demineralization. But once demineralization becomes more than mineralization, we shall have cavities.
I repeat, we shall have demoralization once you have food in the mouth creating acids, the acids destroying the tooth cause cavities. But we also have saliva, saliva which is bathing, bathing the tooth. To, uh, as it is bathing the tooth, it, you remember, fluoride has high affinity. So it is always going to attach itself on the tooth surface. By that, it is having what? It is remineralizing or it is adding the mineral part to the tooth. That one we call it what? Remineralization. So, for that matter, that's why we are always saying that the toothpaste you use should be having fluoride. Because the fluoride, the one that quaches in the saliva, it will add itself on the what? On the tooth. So, saliva also does what you call remineralization. Lastly, I know this lecture has been a bit lengthy. We shall have the antibacterial effect. Antibacterial effect. Thank you so much for watching this video. If at all you think it has been beneficial to you, kindly subscribe, share, and like. Thank you so much for watching.